What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm deep within Chicago for a special unveil of this vehicle right next to me. This is it. This is the all new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. But before we get into this midsize SUV that's been maxed out, let's talk about what's going on here. The Highlander, believe it or not, it's been around since 2001 really came into the scene and kind of shook the auto industry with what an SUV was really meant to do, the capability and the versatility. Now we have already brought you the latest generation of the standard Highlander. Well, Toyota, being Toyota, wants to make sure that there is really a vehicle for every household situation. They decided to take the Highlander name and turned it into the Grand Highlander. Now, the good news is, if you thought that Toyota was just gonna add a few extra inches to the standard Highlander and call it a day, I am here to tell you that there's a lot of surprises, not only on the outside, but also under the hood and the interior. But what I wanna find out is, if you're looking for that midsize SUV with maximum three row capability, is this the best new midsize to buy over the competition, let's go ahead, let's dive into this new Grand Highlander and find out. Right off the bat, the sheer size of it. So for people who don't wanna go the Sequoia route, this really is gonna check off a lot of boxes because the vehicle is a little over six inches longer, it's a little over two inches wider and two inches higher. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, you have a little bit larger size, Highlander with this Grand Highlander, but you're also going to be maximizing interior and cargo volume for your passengers and your stuff. Now at the front of the business, you're going to notice a unique style to it. And I'm really digging how they worked all of the LED lighting. So you have this signature LED daytime running lamp. Look at the way it kind of tips in and angles towards that LED projector beam style headlight. Everything blacked out on the interior. I'm liking the way they brought some extra trim and not just kind of putting it down low, they actually brought it up higher. So you'll notice on this top platinum trim, you have this chrome brow that extends from one headlight all the way across to the other side to really show that little bit more muscular look without going too over the top. Now working your way down, the great news is for people who like to have additional lighting, they did bring LED fog lamps, and I like the way they brought them up a little bit higher than what you find on most other SUVs. And I'm really digging this flat black area that houses it because it really kind of accentuates the body lines, how you have that extension in the front fascia. Working your way all the way down, a little bit of this metallic silver finish, and then you do have this fake vent area, which I am gonna have to zonk. But the great news is, like I said, this metallic silver finish gives it a nice polished look on the lower portion. Now, as we come across the new front end of this Grand Highlander, you see a lot of that nice bold strength. There's that chrome brow I was telling you about that goes all the way across the front. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what are the three trims? What are the different grades of the Grand Highlander? You're gonna have LE, you're gonna have Limited, and then of course, Platinum. You got your Toyota badge with all that history, remember, of durability, reliability. Of course, now we're looking at all this style, and I'm really digging on the lower grill area, this metallic gray finish. You're gonna have a forward-facing camera, full functionality here, and I really like how it kind of touches on the style from your regular Highlander, the RAV4, the Sequoia. You could see that family lineage from small size SUV as we move our way up. And then on the lower portion, you do have this nice lip extension with that metallic silver and a little bit of flat black, which kind of sets it all off. But like I said, a little over two inches wider than your standard Highlander. Now, as we rise up onto that long hood, the great news is if you want different choices for engine options, you're gonna get it with this new Grand Highlander. There's three different engine options and we'll get more to that once we pop this hood. But I really like just the clean lines coming off the front fascia, and then they evaporate as you go towards those A pillars. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So on this particular trim, you're gonna notice the larger 20 inch wheel. Standard wheel is gonna be an 18 inch wheel, but I love the machined aluminum, all those nice dark accents, 
all the way around. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what is the size of the tire on this wheel? You're looking at 255 on the width and a meaty 55 series sidewall. That's gonna allow for a little bit more comfortable ride. Don't be afraid of a 20 inch wheel. Once upon a time, 20 inch wheel meant that your ride was gonna be really harsh, but you're not gonna have to worry about that with the way that they spec the tire. Of course, on this new platform, you're gonna get all that nice rigid structure that you're familiar with, with your standard Highlander, now brought into the Grand Highlander. A little bit of flat black around the fender openings. Let me know how you feel about that. If you think that on the top platinum trim, that should be all painted, but definitely a clean wheel design. And especially with the color of this particular Grand Highlander, it's working perfectly. Now, from the side, I'm gonna stand here. Remember, I'm six feet tall, kind of show that extra length. Like I said, over six inches of extra length and two inches of extra height. But the great news is what I'm finding is that where the roof rails are, you'll still be able to kind of get up and tie down any kayaks that you have up there, a mountain bike, a cargo carrier. So this is gonna be that ultimate family hauler without going into the full size SUV segment. Because remember, this is a mid-size three row SUV. You're gonna have color matched on the mirror caps. You got your turn single slim and trim. I like the way on the platinum trim, you have this bright, shiny metal work only along the bottom. I'm finding that brands that do it top and bottom, it makes the side seem a little bit heavy. So I'm glad that they only kept it on the lower portion. Like I pointed out earlier, you have those bright silver roof rails. Along the bottom, you have the flat black, and I think that's a good idea. The reason why, of course, as you're doing your long journeys across the country, that's gonna take a better beating rather than it all being painted, because I'm telling you, this beautiful paint job really accentuates the lines of this new Grand Highlander. As we work our way back, this is the big, the big question mark that we're all wondering. What is it gonna be like once we're sitting inside where this rear quarter window is? But I love the size of the quarter window. Very important because it allows people not to feel claustrophobic. I feel like certain brands, they go a little small, a little too stylish on the quarter window. And what that could do is it, you still have room in that third row, but because there's not enough sunlight, it kind of makes it feel smaller than what it really is. So I'm very happy to see the size of this rear quarter window. And I like the way the trim comes right into a knife blade and then ends. We don't need it to roll all the way up because there's still a lot of going on on the rear pillar. Now, as we kind of work between the scenery back here, you can see on the back side you got a nice long roof spoiler. You got a color match shark fin antenna and they did a great job integrating the third brake light, nice and high to alert people behind you that you're getting on the brakes. Here's a little fun fact. When was the first year that this was DOT required to have a third brake light? Anybody know? Yes, you in the back? You're correct. 1986 is the first time that the DOT required a third brake light in a production vehicle here in the United States. Of course, we have our exposed wiper, really nowhere to stuff it underneath the spoiler here. So I can understand the reasoning why they put it here, but I like the way they angle the glass and they didn't use a bunch of plastic aero. That's another thing that certain brands are using a lot of aero in this area with a bunch of plastic. It's nice to have the smooth, clean glass and to wrap up the glass, they did a great job on the styling of their taillights. Of course, we got our hybrid max. That's gonna be our top power plant for this Grand Highlander. And I think another thing that as soon as I saw the pictures, I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. Look at the way they took the Grand Highlander name. It's color matched and it's nicely placed in that mid area to where it's not just a bunch of stuck on emblems. I'm really digging the way they did that. They kind of sunk in the Toyota badge within that gloss black trim. And then as we go all the way down, one thing I like to see is look what we have, actual functional exhaust on both sides, nice oval opening slash cut, one on each side with some flat black and that silver finish just like we found up front. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood on this particular platinum trim Grand Highlander and find out what's cooking. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod, but the big news is, is that not only do you have the three different grades, you also have three different engine choices to make when you're looking at the new Grand Highlander. And I wanted to start off with the top dog. So underneath the hood of this particular platinum trim Grand Highlander, what are we looking at? 
we're looking at that hybrid max power plant. That's a 2.4 liter inline four turbocharged engine that guess what? Is producing 362 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. That makes this the most powerful mid-sized Toyota SUV they have ever made. And then if you're wondering, well, Joe, those numbers sound good. What's the zero to 60? Zero to 60 in 6.3 seconds, and you still get the tow. Towing capacity, 5,000 pounds. Now, if you're also wondering, well, Joe, what's the transmission in this hybrid max system? You're looking at that direct shift six-speed automatic. That's a traditional torque converter automatic transmission. For your other choices engine-wise, the base standard engine is gonna be a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four paired with an eight-speed automatic. But for those that wanna maximize fuel sipping in their Grand Highlander, there is the availability of the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four that has that hybrid component to it. Those could be bought front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So nice to see. I know a lot of people, when we did the Highlander with the new turbocharged engine, some people were crying about no V6. Nice to see that with the larger Grand Highlander, you're getting the most powerful midsize SUV from Toyota with this hybrid max setup. But you know what? I wanna show you a different power plant in a different Grand Highlander, and then we're gonna get back to this one and jump in and show everything that's new to find out. Let's go do All it. Right, guys, don't adjust the screen on your phone or your laptop or even your TV. You're not seeing something by accident. We've done this on purpose. What's great about these media events, especially launch events, they tend to bring some other colors plus some other ways that they're trimmed out. So I wanna point out a couple things with this particular white platinum trim that is different than the one that we showed you at the start of the review. First of all, you're gonna notice some bling bling in action on the wheel. So those are still 20 inch wheels, same design, but they're fully chromed on this particular one. Let me know how you feel about the chrome wheels compared to that machine aluminum with the dark color accents. Another thing is that since this has the standard engine, that internal combustion engine, this has a different grille and front fascia. So at the start, front end of the business here, you're gonna notice on this particular one, instead of having that metallic gray finish, you're gonna have the gloss black. Still have the forward facing camera because this is a platinum trim, but you'll notice the gloss black, and then you'll also notice the color matched lower lip area whereas the first one had the silver, that metallic silver finish. So it's kind of cool that you don't just get a different look based off a grade that you choose, but you're also getting a different look based off the engine that you choose. And like I promised you, I'm not a liar, here's another engine option. So what you're looking at underneath is something that is gonna be familiar if you've been watching our Toyota reviews. This is that 2.4 liter turbocharged in line four. Now the great news is it's paired with an eight speed automatic and this is gonna be your standard engine. And just to recap, what are the other two engines? If you have not been paying attention, you have that hybrid that's gonna be that 2.5 liter naturally aspirated in line four with the hybrid adjustment. And then you're also gonna have the hybrid max, which is that top dog, which produces the most power of any mid-size Toyota SUV but I definitely wanted to showcase what the standard engine is gonna be. Now it's time to get back into that other Platinum and show you what the interior is bringing when you go grand in the new Grand Highlander. All right, guys, we're inside this all new, first time ever Toyota Grand Highlander. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've been looking for a new SUV. Everybody and their mother is telling me to get a Kia Telluride but I'm very curious about this Grand Highlander. And to be honest with you, my grandmother had a Toyota. My grandfather has always had Toyotas. My sister was born in a Toyota. I'm really liking this Grand Highlander. How much is it? Well, that's the thing. This is the first media launch look of this vehicle. No pricing is available yet, but expect it to be very competitive, especially with what you're getting now. But I'm here to show you all the new details of how this Grand Highlander is so much different than the standard Highlander. Let's see what you get to the door panels. 
Love the use of the materials. Soft touch up top. Then they went with this nice satin, satin black finish. It, I know on camera it may look like it's trying to be carbon fiber. It's not. It's just a texturized piece of satin black. And the reason why I like that is you won't get fingerprints on it. Little bit of silver by the door handle. Everything else is flat black around the switch gear. And that's so important because like I said, that fingerprint issue you're not going to have to worry about soft armrest and then if you notice that door pocket is a good size to where you could get a full foot long chicago hot dog in there with extra relish and sauerkraut on top now going from the door panel to the dash that soft touch material i'm loving the stitching and then look what they did instead of making this just a standard compartment where you would put your twinkies which you could still do that you could fit up to about 10 twinkies in the slot you could also use this as a nice little area to charge your devices because they moved a USB-C there. You put your phone, your iPad right into that slot. You'll also notice some nice bronze accents, gives it a little extra feel. And this one has the optional JBL sound system. Now, as you slide on in, you're gonna notice that massive 12.3 inch infotainment system. It's all one system, which I like with the infotainment and the AC controls. I'll show you more of this when we do the media drive, but of course it has the new Toyota multimedia system. We have all new air conditioning controls, dual climate, three stages of heated seats, and three stages of ventilated seats. Thank you, Toyota, for that. You have your nice digital display in the center for all the readouts. Nice toggle switches feel good. More of that bronze trim, and then watch this. I put the, push the camera button, because we have 360 degree cameras, you get that nice digital scan all the way around and you can see where we're at in this underground layer deep within Chicago. Supposedly Al Capone used this building as a fortified structure. Now working your way down, another USB-C, and then to top it off, they give you another one. So you actually have a total of three USB-Cs that are easily had by the passenger and the driver. There's your power on button, you got a nice place here for two, three musketeers, king size, wireless charging. And then with the cup holder arrangement, you actually get three different sections. This is where you could put one of those big, large Yeti style bottles. And then you have your two standard cup holders. There's your Toyota key fob. Simple, clean. I like the way it says Grand Highlander and it's got that bronze trim around the side. This is going to control in this particular one, your direct shift six-speed automatic transmission with the bronze touches. You have a control knob here to go through the different modes. Of course, you're gonna have hill descent control, snow mode. And then one thing I definitely wanna point out is this new compartment on the side here to where you could put a small purse, a purse, a bag, a satchel, or a sack, or just a couple Granny Smith apples in there for that big commute. And then you'll notice a unique difference with the center console. Instead of this all coming up, you have that nice sliding system here, very, very deep within this area. I think the best thing I could do to give you a visual reference of how much space there is, you could probably put a bucket of KFC in there. So 12 pieces and a couple biscuits. Chicago style, of course. What do they do? They pour mustard all over their biscuits. Very unique. Seats. Love the soft touch material, that bronze in the center, that micro suede, nice bolstering. Of course, you're going to get full power assist for the passenger, full power assist for the driver. We got a massive, ginormous panoramic sunroof. And guess what? We also have that great digital rear view mirror technology that's easy to turn on and off all by the flip of a tab. It's on, now it's off. Coming over here to the business end, I want to show you behind the wheel of the new Grand Highlander. Hey guys, business end, behind the wheel of the new Grand Highlander. They did a great job creating more passenger volume, not only for the driver, but for the front passenger. I can't wait to see what's going on behind us. Down below, you do get a nice aluminum sill plate with the Grand Highlander name to welcome you so you can remember what vehicle you bought. Of course, you have your seat controls with that lower lum lumbar, 10-way adjustable, 10-way adjustable for the driver, eight-way adjustable for the passenger, and then there's the steering wheel. Nice leather wrapped all the way around. The bronze trim is very consistent and cohesive throughout the whole interior. Got a little bit of gloss black, 
not a big deal, but you'll notice that you do have paddles on the back of the steering wheel to go through that direct shift six-speed automatic. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and it is heated. So this is a heated steering wheel. And then you'll notice the gauge cluster. Nice, clear graphics, fonts, colors. And then when you change your modes, it brings up some cool graphics, just like you're playing Gran Turismo at home. And then on top of that, you do have a nice, large head-up display. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into that mid-row and see what's new in this Grand Highlander. All right, guys, mid-row time in this mid-size three-row SUV, the new Grand Highlander. And we're gonna start right off with the big question, how much room is there? There is more room, definitely, than your standard Highlander. And I love the materials. You notice all the way around, the soft material on the seats, you have a super-sized pocket for a deep dish Chicago-style pizza. And then here's where things get really hot. USB-Cs, that's no big deal, but check it out. Three stages of heated seats and three stages of ventilated seats on this platinum trim. You got your AC controls and down below, a home power source that's easy to get to. I'm sitting here, cool as a cucumber. You got your security shade up. You got your AC vents. I love the cup holders on the doors. Captain's chair armrest. This is always a big question. It's just on the line, so I'm not going to zonk it. But what's nice is if you don't want it there, you can lift it up. I do have two big gulp size cup holders down below and a place to put some combos. And then check this out. If you want more or less room, these seats do slide. And you know they're going to do it, right? They do recline as well. So this feels really good right about now. Mid row, check, check, check. Let's get into that third row of the new Grand Highlander and see if size matters. All right, guys, third row time. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. And definitely what I like is when you come into the vehicle, you got a larger area to climb in to this rear seat. Remember, I'm six feet tall. So this is going to give you an idea for your maybe teenage kids having them sit back here. Yes, I'm a little close to the headliner, but here's the good news is you could actually recline the seat a little bit more. Watch this. You do have to reach over your shoulder to get it but I'm gonna go ahead and I'll lean this one back too. So now, wow, what a difference. Putting that seat in full recline really allows me to not be close to that headliner. I even have the seat, just so you know, in a position where I was sitting. So I didn't move the seat all the way forward. There's still movement for the seat to go forward. So you can see where my knees are, they're not in my mouth. I'm not back here like this. Good position on the knees. I love the shoulder space, and what's really nice is, is that they remembered that people in the third row are not peasants. So you have USB-Cs, massive cup holders, and AC vents. So you don't have to be a peasant anymore sitting in the third row or take the kid that in your family you don't love as much and put them in the third row. They're gonna feel good back here, and the material is just as nice in the third row as it is in the mid row. But let's get to the other big question, cargo space. Let's hop in the back and see what we could stuff into this Grand right, Highlander. guys, that other big question, if you're hauling around your family, that means you're hauling around a bunch of stuff that your family has. Let's get into that cargo area. Now, what's nice is you just hit the button. Of course, you're gonna have electric assist, rises on up. And what I did was that I left the third row up, and this is where it really is telling of the extra length of the Grand Highlander. So what are you looking at? You're looking at over 13 cubic feet of space with that third row up. Now on the driver's side, what's nice is, is that they give you a home power source where you could plug in right there. You got the subwoofer for your JBL sound system. And then another thing that I like, which you let me know in the comment section how you feel, I like manual seats, especially for the third row. Let me know if you like power seats. I feel like with the manual seats, especially the way Toyota does it, it's just a one, two, three thing and you don't have to sit there and hold your finger on a button or just another motor to brake. But let's see how it goes. Real simple, you're just gonna pull up on this lever right here, and as you can see, you can move it back or forward, and then I'm just gonna drop it all the way down. Same thing on this driver's side, third row seat. And you can see, you got that 60-40 split. I went ahead and I put down the mid row just to maximize and show you what we're working with. So now you're looking at with the third row down, 
that's going to be 84.3 cubic feet of space. With the mid row down, you're looking at 97.5 cubic feet of space. And this is where the Grand Highlander flexes its muscle. There's those USB-Cs that I was trying to show you when we were sitting in the third row. Like I said, Toyota has taken care of each and every row of passenger. But you know what? I know you want to go on throttle with me. I'm dying to go on throttle as well. We have burned up the clock. Toyota's telling me that they're going to get the hook and pull me out of here. So why don't we go ahead until we're behind the wheel, let's wrap it up from Chicago. Right, guys, it's been an amazing experience being deep within the heart of Chicago, but also with this new Grand Highlander. We got to thank everybody at Toyota USA for allowing us access to this all new vehicle to bring to you. Let me know what you think. Has Toyota done the right thing with taking the Highlander name, adding that Grand, creating a Grand Highlander, giving the extra length, giving the extra interior space, and then of course, that extra power underneath the hood. Let me know your thoughts in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rides family. Of course, we got to give it to the guns behind the lens. Those are certified. Show Lori some love in that comment section for her hard work. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.